Hi there, my name is Memo. This is my channel, Houseplanty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it around me and behind me. I talk about tropical houseplants. Now, this is installment four, I think, of the plant reviews. And today I want to talk to you about, let me pick up the plant. I want to talk to you about a not very large philodendron, and I'll bring it in a bit closer. This is the philodendron gigas. And you can see some of the larger leaves down there and here. And yeah, so essentially, just to recap for the people that are new to the series, A, this is a series, so there is a playlist on my channel if you want to see some of the other plants that I've talked about. But in these review videos, what I'm hoping to do is give you an honest review, so warts and all, about my experiences, and again, it's going to be personal and biased towards my experiences, because that's the only thing I can talk about, <laughs> with having this plant, growing this plant, getting this plant in, propagating the plant, dealing with pests, the availability, all of the things above, basically. So definitely this is going to be an interesting one, and hopefully this one doesn't ruffle too many feathers. I'll give you a bit of a hint there. But, um, but yeah, that's how I like to do these reviews. So you'll see there'll be different sections, so you can skip if you want to in the different section that you might be interested in. This, and I'm not sure if I've said this already, this is a plant that's getting close to being two years old. So that should tell you something. Granted, I think when I first got this plant, it was maybe only a leaf or two, and what I will always do is see if I can find a picture and add it of what it used to look like when I first got it, and essentially, talk to you about my experiences. Now, as with all of these videos, I do highly encourage you, if you've got the same plant and you want to share your experiences, very much like an Amazon review situation, please do let it leave it down in the comments below, because I'm hoping, and it is working actually with a lot of these videos now, it's really, really encouraging that a lot of you guys are actually putting your experiences with that specific video plant, basically, and putting it down in the comments, and a lot of other people are getting the experience to see not just my review, but other people's as well. And I think that would be cool. I mean, there's there's nothing like a review for plants or house plants anywhere online. You can get descriptions of them, but very rarely do you get reviews. And I will try with a lot of these reviews to get some of my oldest, most established plants. So I can at least give you a few years of experience of growing these plants and growing them in different situations, different humidity environments, different light situations. I've moved house <laughs> with hundreds of plants three times in the last three years. I've just bought this place, so hopefully I won't be going anywhere for a while. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> all three different locations had very different conditions, so I can talk through most of those locations, basically. So. Right, without further ado, let's move on to the first topic, which is background. So the background of this specific plant is I got it from a local seller here, basically. So I went and picked this up. I can't remember if I went specifically for this plant or if this is one that I just added to my basket and picked it up because I knew, and this is a bit of interesting information, and it might be kind of obvious, again, this is another one that the, the naming of this plant is either going to be kind of Latin or Ancient Greek, both of them mean the same thing. Yigas, or Gigas, generally, at least in Ancient Greek, means giant, so an actual giant. So I thought, you know what, there's an amazing plant that I keep seeing, and you can see the leaves are quite velvety, there's nothing particularly spectacular at the back of the leaves. I do encourage you, if you haven't already seen this, do a quick Google on the Philodendron Gigas and have a look at the mature version, because this is one of those plants that does change drastically between the more juvenile form. And yes, even though this has got some slightly longer leaves, this is still a juvenile form in relation to what a fully mature plant might be in nature. Now, my first tip should have been I don't think I've ever really seen that many images of a fully mature Gigas in 
anybody's household conditions or environment. Most people have got a plant that looks a bit like this. Granted, some of it might be a bit longer and I am exceptionally jealous of the people that get the really, really long leaves. I did have some super long gigas leaves, but interestingly enough, they were at the very top and this was getting very top heavy because the stem doesn't really get much thicker. And again, apologies for all the janky support sticks, but the stem is very thin, even when the plant is relatively mature and it's been growing for a while. So I had to chop those larger leaves and get them propagating. And I will come on to propagations in a minute. But yeah, this is a plant that I will say, at least for a philodendron, it is very cool to look at. It does also get, and you might be able to see there if I bring it up, it will get the quintessential, um, oh, what's the meme? I think it's the Cinderella foot in the shoe, which is all crumpled up basically that the philodendron pink princess will get. This one does get it as well, where you might get a leaf getting caught in a caterpillar. So that's the first minus for me at least. But yeah, and it's it's been okay to grow. It's not been the easiest. And actually, I'm not going to lie, this is probably going to be one of the most challenging philodendron that I've had to grow. I mean, it's still a philodendron, so it's still going to be relatively straightforward. But the smallest change to this plant can set it back. And we'll talk about speed of growth. So that moves me quite nicely onto growth speed or speed of growth. And wow, like this can tell you, I mean, obviously I've chopped off a few of the larger leaves that were at the top and they are propagating, but damn, I don't think I have, I'm trying to think now, maybe one or, maybe one or two others, possibly one of my slowest growing philodendrons, 100%. It just takes its time. So from the moment that you see a new leaf emerging to the moment that it actually emerges out of the caterpillar could be a couple of months. <laughs> and that's why I understand how people get a bit worried and they want to remove the leaf from the caterpillar because a plant like this that takes so long to push out a new leaf, you kind of want to help it out. But then you also, it's even more disheartening if you try to get it out of the caterpillar and it snaps. And I did another video on this about how you shouldn't try to relieve the leaf from the caterpillar, even if it looks painful like these ones do. But I will say out of all the plants that I have tried to remove the leaf from the caterpillar in the past, this one is nearly 100% of the time you will snap the leaf. You will damage the leaf or you will snap the leaf entirely off just don't do it. Trust me on this one. Just don't do it because the leaves are nice and velvety, but they're slightly stiff, but soft at the same time. So you can pierce through. They're just stiff enough that you can snap it or put your finger through it, basically. So, mm, but yeah, speed of growth on this is slow. And I won't lie, like I've used different growing media for this. I had it in a light, airy, arrowed soil mix. This is now in pond. It's actually doing a bit better in pond, so I've kind of left it in there. Interestingly, when I took the cuttings for the propagations from the top, it did activate a node at the top, but it also branched out in two other places at the bottom. So yay for cutting off the apical dominance. And again, I've got another video on apical dominance, and hopefully I'll put it up on the corner there. But yeah, this is a plant that is very, very slow. And please, I do encourage you, have you had a different experience with this plant? I don't know if it's just me. I think from what I'm seeing from other people, <laughs> this is a slow growing plant, for sure. So do let me know down below if you've had different experiences and more specifically share with everybody what you have done, because maybe it's something that you're doing that the rest of us are all not that might crack the riddle as to why this plant is as slow as it is. Now let's move on to the next topic. 
So, ease of propagation. <laughs> ah, propagations. So, straight off the bat, I'll tell you the propagations that I took from that plant I've got in pond. I can see them on the side there. I'll see if I can actually pick one up and I'll show you. So, you can see one of the propagations in front of me. You can see one of the bigger leaves that I was telling you about before that I had to cut off. And this one had a leaf that came out disformed because again it got stuck in the caterpillar. That was the first deformed leaf that came out from the plant when it was when it started rooting. That was the next leaf and that one hasn't even unfurled. <laughs> and there's another one coming out now again. And this one I've put straight into a pond with self-watering as well. So that was that with this one. I haven't tried it in different propagation media, but <laughs> if you think the parent plant is slow, wow, the propagations. Granted it is winter, so I'll give it that, so I don't know if it's going to be faster in the summer, but this took, say, three months to get a semi-decent root system going, and probably another two months after that to get its first leaf. <laughs> so, even the propagation is slow on this plant. At least it has been in my experience. And again, as I keep saying, if you've had different experiences, do let us know down below. <laughs> but yeah, it's still a cool plant, but yeah, slow, slow. And the people who've been around for a while know that I've got zero patience. So this is one that really pains me. But yeah, let's move on to the next topic. So availability of this plant. This is an interesting one and this one I think will tie in to what we were seeing about the speed of growth and the ease of propagation with this one as well. So this is a plant that you don't see very often coming online uh, or I didn't back then when I was looking and I think even now it's not one that you see coming up super often. It might be because the demand isn't there for this plant. I don't think this is a massively coveted plant as far as I'm aware. In terms of the price when I got this, I think this was again on the mid to high double digits, at least here in the UK and I would assume Europe as well because I'm based in the UK so prices generally tend to be quite similar here. It might be different where you are and also should have mentioned this caveat at the beginning of the video, if you're watching this way in the future, some of these things might seem odd and might seem out of date for you. Check the date of the video, it might be out of date. <laughs> but a couple of years ago when I got it, it wasn't super expensive. It doesn't become available as often as all that. Again, it might be because of the demand. But again, touching on speed of growth and ease of propagation for this plant, and this isn't a plant that will at least in my experience, throw out aerial roots really easily to help with that propagation process get going. That might be it. So it might be because there's not as many people that are interested in this and it's also because this plant, at least in my experience, isn't the fastest growing plant or the easiest to propagate. And obviously a lot of people would want the leaves to be as mature as possible because you'd imagine, I'm trying to see here, uh, some of these kind of really small juvenile leaves at the bottom, which you could still propagate from, look like a really small micans leaf. And you can get micans relatively easily in most places now. Why would you spend an awful lot of money to get something like this, only for it to go not very large and kind of velvety like this? I don't know. So, I mean, the the kind of obvious difference would be, so you'd have the micans, then you'd have this as an in-between at this stage of its life, obviously not fully mature. And then you would have something like the Melanochrysum, which has got much more large and in-charge leaves. So it's all very similar look to them, but the micans and the Melanochrysum grows a lot more readily and a lot more stably than this one ever has done. So I think that's probably why there's not as many of them in the market, as well as probably not as much demand. And the price, I would almost expect the price, to, I'm actually surprised by the price of it being as low as it is, purely on how slow growing it is, how undesirable the, sl the really, really small leaves might be as a propagate. And yeah, I would expect it to be a bit more. 
but it is what it is. I don't think the price or the availability has changed drastically since I got it two years ago. So I think it's about the same level now, but it might be different in your location. Do let us know. Right, pests. And pests might be one of the few redeeming features or situations with this plant. I've not really had many pest pressures with this. I'm trying to think back there was a point where I had thrips in part of my collection, collection, and this is one of the few philodendrons that the thrips did get attracted to. It's interesting because I find with thrips, they are much more fond of the slightly more succulent leaves. So that's probably why they're a bit more attracted to this. And if you think about most of the plants, if you've had the unfortunate situation of having thrips in your household or in your collection, you know what I'm talking about. I think, and I've never thought about this, I think it's mainly been on plants that have got slightly more succulent leaves. I don't think I've ever had thrips on something like, say, a maiden hair fern, where the leaves are like paper thin. They, they need a bit more. So this was one that did get some thrips on it. I'm trying to think, maybe this had spider mites once, but again, neither the thrips went bonkers, nor the spider mites went bonkers. So not one the pests are instantly attracted to, but to be fair for how slow it grows, can you imagine how disheartening it would be if you've been growing something to just this size after two years, if you've got a pest infection and you lost half the plant? <laughs> I'd be in the corner rocking and crying, I think. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's not one that has had an awful lot of pests in the past. So that could be something, again, this is just talking through my experience in my environment. Obviously I'm growing this in a conservatory right now, but this has been in lower humidity environments and brighter environments as well. So that is something to bear in mind there. But yeah, let's wrap up with some final thoughts. So my final thoughts on this plant, and I think <laughs> you've followed the trend throughout this, is gonna be different than some of the other reviews that I've done so far. I think the big question would be, knowing what I know now, would I purchase this plant again? No. That should tell you something. It's not because it is a particularly difficult plant to care for necessarily, as a philodendron, it's kind of, it is what it is. It's got relatively fine roots. I'm not, as again, I've mentioned this before, I'm not the most patient person in the world, but two years, that's all I got from that plant. And you can see some of the other plants that I've got in here. So for instance, the Esmeral Dense, which is huge, isn't even two years old at this point in time. And it might just be me. I don't necessarily want the huge leaves, but I would want a bit more plant after that long period of time the, the leaves getting stuck really easily, that it's not particularly easy to propagate either. All of these things combined, if I had that budget, and it wasn't a huge amount of money that I spent, if I had that budget to spend on a plant, would I spend it on this plant knowing what I know now? Probably not. I'd probably go for something else, but maybe that's just my personal opinion. I'd be interested to see if you would look at this slightly differently. In terms of scoring this plant, I'd be very generous to say maybe a four out of 10. And again, it's not because it's particularly difficult to care for, it is painfully slow growing. It's not, it's not the easiest thing to propagate. The leaves will get stuck. I keep coming back to the same things over and over again. And it's, I don't know, I think if this plant had a bit more wow factor and it was still slow, so for instance, if it was something like the Esmeral Dense or the Gloriosum and it gives you huge leaves or something really, really impressive, but it takes a long time to do that, then I'd be, you know what, it's worth it, it's fine. You have to wait for a bit longer to get something huge. Again, I'll bring it up. This, two years later kind of not good enough, for me at least. And that's what I'm saying, it's not a case that it's a bad plant. I think it's just a case that, for me, I'd probably just get something else. 
for what I would be looking for in a plant in terms of care. It doesn't excite me, it doesn't spark joy in me, it might do in somebody else, but I think that's the whole point of these videos is go into some of these things with your eyes open. Again, these are just my experiences. Hopefully there will be a, a, a whole spectrum of experiences down below in the comments from other people that have got it. But yeah, I think that is my final thoughts on this one. Sorry, it's not a particularly positive review today, but again, talked about this, warts and all. This is one that isn't a great review for me. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. Hopefully I haven't put you off. <laughs> and I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.